Brought to you by C Prime, an Atlassian Platinum and Enterprise Solution Partner and an Atlassian Verified Vendor. Power Scripts for Jira. All right, in this video, we're going to see how to add and write post functions. Now, last video, uh, I mentioned that validators were sort of the lander for power scripts. Um, it's been kind of my experience that that's how people come across power scripts and get introduced to the script writing. But if validators are, are the lander post functions post functions are where the party's at in my example in my opinion um, so if I come over to this customizing workflows page and documentation um, there's this message that kind of made me laugh it says do not yield to this temptation uh, you should only modify issues in the post function, not in the conditioner or, or the validator. <clears throat> so what we're saying here is this is where you perform other actions other than controlling the user from moving to the next step. And, and if you see these, this don't, any attention to that that's some sort of error so to add a post function we do it the exact same way we do it with the conditioner and validator simply press add post function and we do get uh, a healthier list of built-in post functions but as always we're going to go to our Sill post function, but actually, let's take a look at some examples of what they're doing here that you could also do with Sill. Assign to a current user, assign to lead developer, assign to reporter, fire an event, which will send an email, update an issue field or update an issue status. So we can do all those things, but we can do it. Uh, we can do it better because we can do it conditionally. Well, what if you only want to uh, assign uh, to lead developer sometimes based on a component. Well, you can't do that here, but you can do that with Sill. What if you want to send a custom formatted email or uh, to a custom set of um, recipients other than, than what the notification scheme does? That's where uh, a custom mail event used with Sill will help you. Uh, what if you wanted to assign to a developer based on capacity? These are all things you could do with uh, post functions, which is why I mean, mean it when I say it. This is where the party's at. Uh, one of the things I like to do with post functions is uh, create a standard set of subtasks if there's a standard set of subtasks for an issue type so that the possibilities are just endless so endless uh, in fact that there's almost not much to talk about um, about writing a post function because the script is everything you can do with sill and there's nothing necessarily specific about the post function script other than the fact that um, it's being fired in the post function and it's again it's within the context of an issue because it is being fired from a specific issues workflow so I'm gonna say we'll use an existing script unmodified and uh, I'll just use this guy which I believe is blank I'll say finish so one thing you should keep in mind with um, post functions is the order in which these system post functions and your post function are executed and this number six is the one that really gets me where it re-indexes the issue and you um, 
then you fire the the vent. I like to just move the sill post function down um, underneath all these other post functions, so it's the last step. So I know, I know there's nothing going on in the background of the issue that might impact um, the results we're getting from the post function, and I know there's nothing I'm doing to the post function with the post function that can really uh, impact what's happening with the issue. So I just like to move it all the way down to the bottom. Other than that, the sky is the limit with post functions. So this is how you would add it to the workflow. And let's see, this is in progress. Uh, we'll publish this so we can try a few things out. Then we come over to our sill manager. And here's our new post function. So just for fun, we'll we'll do something in a post function. We'll jump over to our documentation and we'll grab this add comment routine syntax. And we'll just say add comment. Now it's asking for the issue for which the comment is to be attached. Now remember, a post function is fired from within an issue context, which means just by saying key, that variable will grab the key of the issue and populate this parameter. Very, very easy. Um, username. Now there is there is actually almost something like the same concept as issue context with user. It's the current user. So we don't actually have to specify who the user is. We can just say current user, which is a routine but it'll grab the username of whoever's logged in. And then we can say this comment was created with a post function. Yay. And we'll check our script. And then go out to my Test. Let's see. I have one comment. Uh, let's see. Move my window. It says here's my comment. And if I do in progress, maybe. Yay! This comment was created with post function. Voila. That's it. However, like I said, the there is no structure predefined way you must write a post function kind of like there's for validators and conditions um, so from a script writing perspective there's not much to talk about however this is um, opportunity to do a lot of powerful things with post functions and it's my belief post functions are, are where the party's at um, so make them your friend